Here we go, let's watch this. Modern gaming depresses me. This is a video that came out nine months ago, apparently. I guess that's probably about the same time Diablo Immortal came out. And uh, let's see what this is. Here we go. We want to make sure we hear our players, make changes where we can based on that feedback, make sure the game is ready for launch, and then even beyond launch. What a load of bullshit. Oh my god! Jesus! What an intro! You know, I really didn't want to come back with another negative video. That's all I've kind of done since I started uploading. But I feel like something needs to be said about this. Modern gaming sucks at the minute. And it has done for a while, but in my opinion, this is the worst state we've ever seen the industry in. Is it the worst state we've ever seen the industry in? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I think that there were a lot of games that were literal garbage that was made for, like, the, the normal Nintendo, like, before Super Nintendo. Like, man, there were a lot of bad games. I think that, like, really, again, whenever you say modern gaming is bad, what you're really talking about is modern AAA gaming. In terms of greed, unfinished products, lies, just really everything. It's just... Yeah, it's, it's crazy, though, because, like, there's been so many of these videos, and there's a lot of people that think this. So, like, whether you think this is a good, this is, like, it's true or not, like, you got to really say, like, man, it, it's a bit of a situation whenever you have people that are just farming out these videos about how modern gaming sucks, and it doesn't even really matter, like, if it's a big channel or not, the video's popular. It's because a lot of fucking people believe it. That's why. Went out the window, and this is getting ridiculous, in my opinion. My enthusiasm for any game coming out in the future is at rock bottom. I don't feel any excitement towards any game at the minute. And I can't tell you how sad that is to say as someone that's played games for like 13 years. To go on Steam, look at the store page and just see a bunch of games, half of which I feel like are just going to end up being shit and unfinished. Let's and see what these games like are. 13 years. L let's look. To go on Steam, look at the store. Death Stranding. I, I, I don't know if that game's good or not. I heard it's not really that good. Lords of the Fallen. I saw this one. This one looked cool. Store page and just uh, see let's a bunch see. of games. Mortal Online 2. I mean, like, this game is good if you want to lose all your shit. Uh, let's see what else is is in here uh, Elden Ring there it is. Yeah, look at that Half of which I feel like are just gonna end up being shit and unfinished. Yeah, not, and not the other all of them are bad Don't spark my interest. It's just kind of miserable to be honest This is actually the reason why I wanted to play that Forspoken game today is because people like Forspoken is modern gaming and I'm gonna I'm gonna get into it. I'm gonna play the fucking game. I'm gonna see is this really true or is it some bullshit? You know, because like everybody always says that these things are true, right? But like, I want to see them and figure it out. Does that make sense? Rather than like have somebody else dictate it to me. Yeah, play it and find out. That's the same thing I did with like a uh, uh, fucking the Lord of the Rings thing. Uh, the Rings of Power. Like. And to be honest, like, the show, it has, like, very good, is like, highs and lows. Like, in my opinion, I think Elrond and Durin, that whole story arc so far, I really like it. I'm sorry, but I really like both of those characters. I think they're fucking great. Galadriel is kind of a bitch. But, you know, like, that that's something totally different. Elrond is decent, yeah, and so like it, it's, but it's not as simple as like it's just bad. I didn't finish the show. I haven't yet either. That's why I haven't come out with a review for it. About six months ago, I uploaded a video about Call of Duty Vanguard, a game which I had no expectations for. Okay. But in that video, I basically just talked about how I felt like the game was boring and unfinished, monotonous, and a lot of other general terms you may have heard being passed around with modern games. Okay. But 
Unfortunately, this sentiment just applies to like every game released at the minute, especially Halo Infinite and Battlefield 2042, two games which- I was really impressed at how bad Battlefield 2042 was. Like, I almost think like, you know, Jeff Keighley for the next Game Awards, he should have like a couple of different categories for like, most buggy game, biggest disappointment, biggest dog shit, dumbest fucking uh dumbest dialogue you know and then have everybody like have <laughs> have somebody like that go up and you know like give out awards for that yeah biggest fuck up yeah biggest gaming fuck up had a lot of hype around them and ended up just being unfinished unplayable in some instances and biggest lie like take different clips from developers saying different things and then contrast them with what happened in the actual game? Like, which one was the biggest fucking complete 180 degrees lie? That's a real shame. And like, I know some random Northern Irish dude making a video on his 30 subscriber YouTube channel isn't gonna change the world or anything, but no. I just wanted to talk about my thoughts, I guess, because this is kind of a rough period to be in if you're a fan of video games, and uh -huh. I feel like we need to do something about this shit because this is just not right. I feel like a good place to start would probably be the most recent consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, okay. both of which I feel like are just underwhelming, to be honest. They are definitely underwhelming. The thing is, like, the PlayStation 2 was groundbreaking massively fucking groundbreaking because the PlayStation 2 could play DVDs and DVDs back then was like VR is now it was even bigger than VR like DVDs that was like bro you had a DVD that's like space that's like space station stuff you know like because it's a disc and uh DVD is so big yeah that was huge and this is like 2000 I was like when did when did fucking PlayStation come out like 1999 2000 something like that it was a long 2001 it was a long fucking time ago and so and, and then it could also play music and then uh the Xbox came out and it had online gameplay and uh the GameCube came out and it had so th the normal discs were this big and the GameCube discs were this big so, like, GameCube was just changing shit up, right? Like, they were just, you know, like, innovating like fucking crazy. And, uh, that, yeah, and it was, it actually was not a cube. It was a square. Yeah, it was not even a cube. Uh, so, anyway, uh, then you had the next generation. Uh, Xbox 360, what did that do? Well, it sets your house on fire. So, that's cool. PlayStation 3 played, I think, Blu-ray. So, PlayStation 3 was built in with, like, next-gen, uh, software and technology. So that was amazing. And then on top of that, you had the Wii, which was a complete fucking uh, paradigm shift for all gaming. Where, like, you had people going up. Like, the Wii was the first game console that my dad ever got. And it's the only one, by the way. Uh, because he thought, oh, Wii Sports, I can exercise at home. Wii was the first games console, game console that actually appealed to an audience of people that was not gamers. But, and then, like, even the Wii U was marketed horribly, and, uh, you know, everybody knows that. One of the worst-selling consoles of all time, rivaling Sega Saturn, but it was a handheld console. And back then, that was phenomenal. And the Switch is handheld, because, like, you see what he said. He said Xbox, and he said PlayStation. He didn't say Switch, because Switch is still a Nintendo, still reinventing the game. Still doing things different. Still doing some crazy different stuff. You know, they have portable games. They have games you got to stand up and play. And they also shut down Smash tournaments. They're doing shit nobody else is doing. So, point is that, like, back in the day, these gaming consoles had these different value adds that they could provide. And now, for a lot of gamers, people already get those value adds from different places. So, like, how can a gaming console bring something new to the table now whenever, like, everybody has a DVD player, everybody has, like, a Blu-ray player, people have, you know, these other things. So that that's why. Uh, I, I think that's why the gaming consoles nowadays don't have as much value as they used to. Like, PlayStation 2, man, like, th that was an entertainment console. That wasn't just a uh, a video game machine. PlayStation 2 is the GOAT greatest gaming console of all time.
Now, I don't own a Series X, but I have a PS5, mm -hmm. and it's an okay console. It gets the job done. Yeah, it's got like three games. But, like, comparing the leap from PS4 to PS5 to the PS2 to the PS3, there is no contest in terms of which one was a bigger generational gap. Here's an example, GTA San Andreas on the PS2, GTA uh -huh. 4 on the PS3, which one of these looks better? Now let's look. I feel like PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 3, the graphics were definitely better, but like I, I still think that like from Nintendo 64 to GameCube, like that era jump was the biggest one we've had. Got a PS4 game to a PS5 game. Doesn't yeah. this just kind of look the same to you? I don't know, but I don't see a massive gap here. Mm -hmm. Sure, the PS5 game looks better, but yeah, it does. is it that much better? Is I think that graphics, as I said, man, like graphics, like a game with like really, really good graphics is great for a year. A game with really, really great gameplay is great forever. Is it $500 and sold out all around the world better? I don't think so. Sure, ray tracing and mm -hmm. frame rate might be a big difference. I personally don't care for either of those, aside from maybe 60 FPS, which is basically the norm now anyway. But really, guys, is this what the fucking PS5 is? Like, that fucking minor? No. Yeah, I think the PlayStation 5, the truth is, I don't think we really needed the PlayStation 5. Like, I, I don't know, I feel like the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, like, th they weren't that big, like, you're right, like, absolutely, I think so. I am content with personally, my purchase of my PS5, but that's because I've never owned a PlayStation console before, and it gives me a good and opportunity I'm a PC to play gamer the exclusives too. in the best way I can. I'm not emulating all that shit on PC. Yeah. But if I had owned a PS4 and I went to this, I wouldn't really think this is a big change. And no, it's really not. I mean, I use my PS4 more than my PS5. And let me tell you, the Xbox Series X is a fucking disaster in comparison. This shit is not even a new console. This is just a better Xbox One. And it costs 500 bucks, and this is Xbox's big generational leap. You guys couldn't be asked to make a new fucking menu for your console, and you expect me to buy this shit? I think that Xbox is really having a hard time creating value with their console because Xbox is owned by Microsoft and Microsoft's main, uh, you know, main market is PC. And like Microsoft is actually doing something great, which is not having any Xbox exclusives, right? Like you can play Halo on the PC first time for that. That's fucking amazing. I don't know what Microsoft can do to make the Xbox more appealing, but right now it's just like, I could not imagine buying an Xbox. And this comes as somebody who, like, I was an Xbox fanboy. Huge. Like, I mean, Halo 1, Halo 2. The first new console I got out of that generation was a Xbox 360. Really? If your biggest selling point of your fucking modern day video game console is that you can play games released on a console in 2005, Am I going to dump 500 bucks on it, or am I just going to buy the fucking 360 for like 30 off a charity shop and just play all the games that way? I might be an addict to Halo 3, but I'm not paying 500 just to play it at 120 frames per second, Microsoft. I need something- I think so. I, th I think he's right about this, but I also think that Xbox is probably- Xbox sales are probably- this. I'm not a fucking uh, Microsoft analyst, okay? But- I would assume Xbox sales are probably cannibalized the most by PCs. I think that more people make the decision to buy a PC than an Xbox, than people make a decision to buy a PC than a PS5 or a PC versus a, a Switch. Thing new every so often. At the very least, Sony's offering some exclusives. Bro, like this level's so boring, man. Like for real. Like, there's, like, no secondary attacks with this, this, uh, this, this chopper here. Like, I, that's not a pelican, is it? I'm pretty sure it's not. It's a new one. Like, that's so boring. Like, you, this is like a WoW vehicle quest where, like, you just fly around and, uh, it's a falcon. Yeah, I, I don't remember. But, um, anyway, so, yeah, it's like, what the fuck?
God of War Ragnarok yeah. on the way, and we know that a couple other it's games so are boring. Microsoft has nothing. They bet all their money on Halo Infinite, and yeah, they did. without spoiling much of the video, that did not work out very well. You guys need to step your game up, because this shit is very disappointing. I remember being excited for the series. I think that the Xbox Game Pass is unironically goaded, and I also think that people that downplay it and devalue it only do so in the lens of, uh, what do you call it, of, of AAA games. Like I, And actually, Xbox themselves set the record straight. Uh, Xbox Game Pass tweet... Let me see if I see this. So, so this is what, so thank God, thank God, Xbox actually set the record straight with this. This is like earlier this year. And so after years of hype, Xbox Game Pass burnout is here. And e Xbox Game Pass themselves went and said, tell me you limit yourself to AAA games without telling me you limit yourself to only AAA games. And the fact is that this was fucking true, man. Absolutely. I wish more companies would call this shit out. Yeah, the PlayStation pa uh, PlayStation Plus catalog needs another 300 titles. Here, I I'm not sure what's in the PlayStation Plus catalog. Tell me yes or no for these titles. God of War 1. God of War 1 and 2. Yes, Ratchet and Clank 1. Yes, okay, good. Um, Jack and Daxter. One and two. Devil May Cry 3. Devil May Cry 3 and 1. I don't know, man. It seems pretty good to me. Those are all the games I used to play. Sly Cooper? Yeah, yeah. Well, what about Sly Cooper? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. It's not bad. Yeah, it doesn't seem not bad to me. These X, whenever I was Those are the on ones my I Xbox play. One, I hadn't moved to PC yet, and I just remember being gradually more and more and more disappointed until I eventually just said, fuck it, I'm not buying this, and I just moved to PC, shelled out a thousand or two, and yeah, that's expensive. I get most people can't afford that, but you gotta give people who can't a better console than this. I think that consoles are... As I said, I think that the more that... This is what I think is gonna happen with, like, gaming and what's gonna happen with, like, optimization is that you're going to get to the point to where like graphics become photorealistic and like the gap from like, like, am I crazy? But like from 4k to 8k, that doesn't really matter to me. Like, unless you're watching it on an 85 inch TV, it was like, you don't really notice that. So like, you're going to hit that. And I think that after that, you're going to be talking about optimization and money saving. And at a certain point, PCs, a lot of people buy PCs. Now, consoles are still popular because they're a very cheap and easy way to solve these, uh, to solve all your gaming problems. And they also work as entertainment machines. PlayStation 2, again, invented that. And uh, I do think that you're still always going to have people that want to use consoles, especially for like whenever people come over. But in my opinion, I think in 10 years, if you took off the exclusives from these consoles, like, I think exclusives keep these consoles alive. It's like life support for the consoles. You can say all you like about your console being able to run 5,000 gigafucks per second, but if I have nothing to play on it, I don't care. And I think most people won't care unless they just play fucking FIFA every year. Yeah. But Which, by the way, is a lot of people. There are a lot of people that just play FIFA every year. It's a console without its games. This is where I get more negative. I'm gonna try dial down the swearing a bit, but uh -huh. oh damn it, dude! Could any games come out that aren't unfinished disasters? He should have gotten closer. I tell you, man, I played Halo One. Like you can like two tap a hunter if you get close to him in like Halo One, Halo Two. I don't know what the hell he was doing. He needed to get in there, like right in between like those uh uh th those armor plates. Two games that come to my head at the minute. Elden Ring and Dying Light 2, they Reach both released finished, finished products. I am sure they're both great games, but 
they're getting praise for being finished games? Is that how far we've sunken? Yeah, yeah, that's where we're at now, guys. Is like, so basically, if the game is finished, that's a W. Like, imagine releasing a game that's finished. What the fuck? A game deserves praise for being finished? Yeah. Like, okay, I get COVID existed, but you gotta have higher expectations than that. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest example of unfinished games can be traced to the biggest three games released last year. Halo Infinite, Call of Duty Vanguard, and Battlefield 2042. In my opinion, three boring as hell unfinished games. What a surprise. I think most people agree that- I think that with a lot of these games, especially now with the, uh, with like these games trying to be esports, etc. I, I just, I think that too many, too many, uh, let me think of a way to put this, like too many of these like FPSs are trying to be esports like that. Yeah, forcing that is bad. Like I wish that, remember like, what I used to like about Battlefield is that it was like Halo on a much larger scale where you could get in tanks, vehicles, anything like that. It was like Call of Duty, but instead of the scope being this, it was this. And like, I just wish they would make that, like, that experience better. Battlefield was a disaster. It's basically at this point a joke. But the fact that people seriously defend this stuff and say, Oh no, because in like three years it'll be finished. It's really? Really, dude? Oh, I mean, as a WoW player, I mean, I understand that. Imagine if in, like, 2006, a game came out and it wasn't finished. It caught shit on. Good. Everyone hated it. Really good. Look at Sonic 06. That game isn't good. finished. Nobody likes it. I, I felt like Sonic Frontiers was, uh, was like, though. Like, a lot of people like Sonic Frontiers. I'm actually planning on playing that. Like, once I knock a few other games out, I'm gonna play Sonic Frontiers and see what it's like. Yeah, I know he said Sonic 6. What if Sonic 06 came out today in the exact same state? Would you all just go, oh no, because they can just patch all this stuff in the future? That's the I think that if, if you release a game, the truth is if a game gets released and it has a lot of bugs and the bugs are quickly patched out, I'm not really going to give a fuck that much. And like, maybe this makes me like a bad gamer or something, but that's the honest truth. Like, I'm just not really going to give a fuck. Doesn't excuse Some the fact that yeah, they it's not a big the game deal. in this state, does it? Does the promise of patches really justify to you the complete shell of a video game that was released and the lies spewed out by the devs before it came out? I think it's also value proposition. So, like, for example, like, New World is a great example with this. New World released with more bugs than features. But the truth is that I still enjoyed the game, and the value proposition the game provided to me was a positive net effect. Like, I got more out of it than the, the bugs took out of it, uh, took out of the enjoyment. So I kept playing the game. With other games, that was not the case. Like, with Diablo Immortal, I thought Diablo Immortal was just not a very good game. So, like, with some of the buggy things, with, like, the bigger boss fights... Whenever this happened, I was like, ah, you know what? This game's just not for me. I'm done playing it. Like, are you guys that pathetic? I'm sorry. That's the only word I can use to describe it. I've made an entire video about Vanguard, so I'm not going to tread on my opinions too much. <laughs> but, yeah, I kind of just agree with everything I said in that video. My opinions haven't changed. It's boring and it's unfinished. Enough to say about that. But Halo Infinite, that's the one that hurts me the most. Because this really should have been Halo's big return to the spotlight. Well, the reason why it wasn't... I know this is going to make people mad again, but, like... I'm going to let y'all know, like, this is not why people play Halo, is to run around and kite, you know, five hunters with fuel rod cannons around and shoot them. Bro, people play Halo for multiplayer nowadays. The campaign is great, and Doom has shown that campaigns can matter. But I'm sorry, but you should have fucking focused on that multiplayer. And I guarantee you, man, if this game had shipped with a BR, uh, an extraction shooter, and a full fucking multiplayer forge that was ready on release instead of the campaign, it would be in a much better state than it is today. And I don't give a fuck how many Halo purists say that I'm wrong, say it's a bad take or anything. That is a fucking fact. And I've seen that with so many different games recently. It sucks.
This was the game that had the most potential since 3 it in did. my opinion, and they just completely blundered it. The game is not finished, there is no joke here. It's literally just not finished, and it's not glitchy, it works. But there's no content here, and it's just so obvious this was just put out to make a quick no, I know buck. That. And not actually because they really cared about the fans that much. And for a friend. The reason, well, how can you know that it's Halo Reach? Is because Spartans were interacting with each other in the story. Uh, if you knew anything about the story of Halo, Master Chief is like one of the only Spartans by the time that Halo, uh, uh, Halo, Halo 1 comes out. And so that's like, you know, he's like Spartan, uh, you know, 117. Like, what about Spartan 203? And like all the other fucking Spartans. So, like, there are so, like, you can easily tell that it's Halo Reach. Because of just that. Halo 5 has other Spartans? Yes, I know that. And I know that they added more of them, but in a general fucking sense, I would guarantee you it's not one. It's not Halo 5. Or not Halo, not, not Halo Infinite. franchise with such a legacy and all the build-up and everything, just to see it come out mm -hmm. as a complete joke. Beta being charged full price, essentially. Oh, well, so, sorry. It's not being charged full yeah. price because of free-to-play and all that shit, but... It's just... it's It shouldn't even be free-to-play. It should be a game that I should pay money for it and have the get armor. what I bought. Yeah. I shouldn't have to pass off all my complaints of a game just because it's free-to-play. Oh, you got it for free, so you can't really complain. I would have bought it for full price. And if I had, I would have been so angry. It would have been daylight robbery if I had bought it for full price. I think that people need to stop buying these games. It's like, if you can't... If you can't afford this game, and you can't get the opportunity to, like, just buy the game and, like, not give a fuck if the game's not that great, you should not spend money on a game full price. You should not do that. But like, wait for reviews, don't pre-order... And and I'm not saying give it a day. I'm saying give it two weeks. I know it's hard. And I get it, but that's the best decision that you can make if you want to make sure you don't waste your fucking money. Is you give it two weeks. Plus, and it's all because of this live service model games keep pushing nowadays. The idea that you can buy a game unfinished and it will be patched over time. And sure, you might get more content over time than you did at launch, but yeah. really, this should have been here day one. Look at I'm not gonna I'm not gonna roast games as a live service. Final Fantasy XIV is a game at a live service. Dragon Fight is games as a live service. Both games are great. I don't think games as a live service is fundamentally bad. I think that some people just use games as a live service as an excuse to release an unfinished product. Halo 2, that game was developed in like a year basically, yet Bungie still manages to make it a finished game because they cared that much about the product. Mm -hmm. 343 had six years and they had to cut Forge, co-op campaign, mm -hmm. and it's still released unfinished? Like, come on dude. You gotta show some amount of respect to your fans by at least delivering some expectations instead of just lowering them immensely to make the blow of an unfinished game that less painful. That's impressive they released four Halo titles in six years. That That's fucking ridiculous. The main takeaway from live service is that you're not getting more content over time. And, and also that those were the best ones. It's not like those were bad games, like those were the good ones. You're hoping that the devs add all the content they had to cut before launch mm -hmm. to the game during its lifespan. And that's all there is to it. Live yeah, services are nothing more than an excuse. Duty. A shitty promise made by devs that they'll fix your game over time, and if they don't, well they'll just run away with your money. I want to know what game it was that sent him over the edge. What, which one was it? Which one made him, like, which time did he log into the game and see a new battle pass and a patch notes about how they're not going to fix a bug? Like, which one that sent him over the fucking edge? Yeah, Shadowlands, Halo Infinite. I think it probably was Halo Infinite. Yep. And they'll never see it again. Because, like, you think about it in his mind, right? It's like, he says, fuck Halo Infinite. I'm sick of this fucking game. I hate this fucking game. I'm going to go back and play Reach because that's whenever the game was good again. Like, that's, I guarantee you what went through his head whenever he was making this video. Speaking of money, oh, Jesus, microtransactions. I'm honestly going to keep this brief because this is a dead horse at this point. It is. But this shit is getting way too greedy. Like, 
I think Halo Infinite's the perfect example of this yet again, but I'd like to speak generally. 20 bucks for a skin in a video game? That is too much. I don't care. No, it's not. I don't have a problem with that at all. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a hot take here. I don't give a fuck about skins in a video game. I don't care. The only thing I don't like, because you spend the money, you get what you spent the money for. You don't like it, don't buy it. Problem solved. How you spin it? No orange. I don't care if the game's free. I don't care how good the skin is. That is too much. Don't care. I think five, at most, is a decent price for a skin in a game. Sure. But twenty. Five better than twenty. It. Too far. Games like Fortnite have done this for years, and even back then, back when I was playing Fortnite, like everyone else in the world was, I never bought skins because that's just too much. You could buy an indie game with that price. Like, isn't that crazy to you? You could buy- No, no, it, it is. It's definitely fucking, like somebody says, so you, no, there's no so me. Uh-uh, nope, you try to do that fucking extrapolating my logic to a stupid conclusion, you're gonna get banned, you're out. Uh, I see in the ban appeals. So, uh, yeah, definitely, like, this shit happens where, like, you do think, like, whenever you're spending $25 to, uh, $25 to, to buy a skin, you think, like, I could just buy a whole other video game for this price. He's right about this. And I do think the skins have ridiculous prices, but I'm not going to complain about them because there are so many other problems with the games and with gaming that is more important than an overpriced skin. Like, I think gaming simulating gambling and then advertising it towards children via loot boxes and video games releasing unfinished, these are actual problems. Skin prices are not real problems. This doesn't actually matter. Buy a video game for the price of a virtual skin? Mm -hmm. A virtual outfit for your character costs as much as an entire experience yeah usually better than the game you're currently playing. i mean like you use this lot the thing is like he said five dollars is okay for a skin you buy a lot of good games for five fucking dollars man like you humble bundle the shit out of that you can get plenty of games for five dollars so you can apply that logic to any price point anyway like vampire survivors might not be an issue for anymore, example but just these cosmetics they're getting ridiculous in how much they cost and they're just not even good half the time. Look at Call of Duty's bundles. These look like shit to me. And people... It, I mean, I'm going to be real. Like, this does look like absolute shit. Like, what the fuck does that... Like, that is the dumbest, ugliest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't know whoever made that. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. But whoever it was, it was a bad idea. And whoever told you it was a good idea lied to you. That was a, that was a mistake. You should not have done that. It does not look good buy this stuff really that's awful have you nothing better to spend your money on like really look at this attack on i think this looks cool i'm gonna be honest i actually think this looks really cool the other one looks stupid this one looks cool on titan bundle this is fucking awful it's so bad and this shit costs like 20 bucks jesus christ is this the best you can do no, no I, and I think Call of Duty. I guess maybe I think it looks good because it just got compared to that Call of Duty one. That Call of Duty one was a joke. That shit was awful. So like, whenever I saw the Attack on Titan one, I was like, ah, oh, it's not that bad. But like, yeah, I can see how like, yeah, that one kind of sucks to me. He gets it the worst. I don't think it's not only are the I don't think that one's so bad. probably the worst out of all other free to play games, but. The games aren't even technically free to play. Warzone might be free to play, but the yeah, multiplayer for stuff like Vanguard and Modern Warfare still. You, you gotta keep in mind, like, Warzone, there are certain things in Warzone that you don't really. Like, isn't it? Like, I remember I bought Warzone for, like, Forge options or something like that. So, like, it, it's free to play, but, like, there are advantages that you get for buying the game. I think overall the game is fair, though. Costs money, and they're still expecting you to buy all these cosmetics on top of that. If you bought Modern Warfare and bought five skin packs, that's like 160 bucks. Think of that for a minute. 160 bucks? That's like the price of a PS4 at the minute. But I feel like I need to move on. Okay. I feel like I've just been ranting this whole time yeah. about how I don't like the modern gaming standards. Uh -huh. I need to talk positively. 
Let's be honest, I've heard you screaming this Elden on your Ring. mic. Martin, it's the best game in decades. It's a masterpiece. It's easily game of the year. You need to talk it about it positively, and you need to explain why it's gonna hold gaming standards for years to come. And I agree. True. I 100% agree. You heard it here first, folks. Grand Theft Auto V Expanded and Enhanced is Game of the Year, without discussion. This oh is undeniable God. proof that gaming is apexed at this point. Oh my Never God. before have you been able to play a game <laughs> seamlessly at 60 frames per second with ray tracing. Yes, okay, the ray tracing is like barely noticeable, but it is there. It is there. I can't me. tell. 60 frames per second. Wow, 60? Beautiful graphics. That's a lot. This is just, this is uh, unbelievable. What Rockstar have outdone themselves yet again by crafting the most immersive experience ever before seen. Wow. Game. Oh, but this is just a PC version. Hang on, let me, let me show gameplay I've expanded and enhanced just so I can show you how massive this jump is. Okay. Oh. Um. What the fuck is this? Well, bro, was this just- was that just a back alley full of crackheads? You know, I wasn't actually wrong. But yeah? This is kinda <laughs> gonna hold the standard for years to come. This is fucking pathetic. I- I can't even say anything. This is just... pathetic. Rockstar have outdone themselves. And continue to do so. Just now. GTA Plus. GTA Plus. This is fucking robbery. This isn't even a deal. <laughs> you get 500k a month, or like 8 bucks, and that's the selling point of this. But let me just put that in perspective for just a moment. Yeah? PlayStation users used to get 1 million a month before uh, Expanded and Enhanced came out. And what can you actually buy in the game with 500k? A fucking SUV? A couple guns? The shittiest business? Is is this it, Rockstar? Half your content costs over like 2 million? Why are you not giving that money out to people who are paying extra for your- well, well, what do you mean? That, mean that, that would make it pay to win though, right? I mean, if you could just spend money and they just give you money in the game, like... I, I don't know, man. That sounds like that's just pay to win. Like, what the fuck? You shitty subscription service? Why do you continue to taint the reputation of a game you made nine years ago that is unanimously seen as one of the best open world games of all time uh -huh. by continuing to milk the fuck out of its shitty ass online mode? I feel like if he doesn't bring up Skyrim at this point, he's being biased. It's ridiculous. It's extremely disrespectful to yeah, come on. as well. Grand Theft Auto is like the pinnacle of gaming. Most people agree that. There hasn't been a bad GTA game, at least a mainline okay. one, ever made probably. And yet, you guys still fuck it up so badly. Red Dead Online is a corpse at this point. Red Dead 2 received unanimous acclaim from it, like everyone for being- like, I actually wanted to play that game. I bought Red Dead Redemption 2, I never played it. Amazing story and I got all it with that. my PS4 whenever I bought it. it but you guys just let its online mode die like that, just because it wasn't making as much money? And it's rock- That's exactly why they let it die. Like, that is- I I'm gonna say, like, right now, like, that is 100% why they let it die. It wasn't making a lot of money, they had to pay for server space for that shit, they said fuck it. Star we're talking about? Rockstar are doing this? If that doesn't show you- I remember, the only thing I remember from Red Dead Redemption 2 is there was this dude that would make YouTube videos where he would kidnap like women's right act women's right activists in Red Dead Redemption 2 and he would p fucking lasso him and tie him to his horse and drag him over to where the crocodiles are and feed him to the crocodiles and he made videos of this and eventually like fucking YouTube banned him because like all the comments were just like man I wish this would happen in real life and like, all these fucking crazy Crazy people that were typing this shit up. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. You know how sad this industry's gotten? I don't know what will. I guess to conclude, you guys need to stop defending this stuff. 
Look at what's actually coming out at the minute and tell okay. me that you're excited for the future of gaming. Okay. We have a couple great games coming out. I'm sure that Breath of the Wild 2 will be great. And I'm sure God of War Ragnarok will be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Spider-Man 2. But when I say that my most anticipated game at the moment is Sonic Frontiers, a game I am absolutely convinced will be fucking dog shit based on forces, that is not a good sign. Not I feel like Sonic Frontiers was pretty good. Like, a lot of the people liked Sonic Frontiers. Am I crazy? Yeah. Like, I, I plan on playing it. A good sign at all. Stop defending companies that milk you dry and stand up for once. Stand up to this oppressive, greedy bullshit. I'm gonna say, like, right now, like, this is 100% like internet chess beating. Nothing about this is gonna happen. Like, it doesn't matter how many YouTube video essays people put out until the normies stop spending money on this shit or it's, like, against the law, then it's not going to stop because all these companies, all they want to do is make money and people keep buying them. You think FIFA does it? You think they release Ultimate Team because people don't like it? No, they release it because they do. It's just you don't see those people because they're just sitting there. You know, they're they're playing on their Xbox Series S or whatever the fuck it is. And they never go on the internet to complain about the game. And maybe we'll see a difference in that's this industry. It. And that's all I have to say, I guess. I don't know what else I can honestly add to this. Yeah, I mean, people it, it's are talking sad, about but it all there the it time, is. But no one's making a difference. Personally, I've refused to buy a game that's over 60 bucks. And I don't buy any microtransactions. I didn't buy GTA Expanded and Enhanced, and I just. Don't... I think that's good. Like, if you don't like the, uh, if you don't like the way gaming is, you should not support it. Like, that's the smartest thing to do, because like, if you don't like it and you still buy into it, then it's like nothing's gonna change. But the reality is that I'm not gonna tell people don't buy a video game. Like, if you want to buy the video game, then just buy it. Like, you know, you don't, like, your life doesn't have to be a, um, what's the word for it? Uh, your life doesn't have to be a statement. You just play a video game. It, it's not, it, it, it is just a game, you know? Want to buy any more modern video games? It's not games? Crusade, Until yeah. they're good. I will buy modern games. I bought Elden Ring. I bought Dying Light 2. But those games were both finished. I didn't buy Vanguard because it might get good in the future. I didn't buy Battlefield. And I most certainly will not be buying more unfinished games, because until games are releasing in a good state, I don't see a point in playing them. Why play a game that's shit? If it's not fun, why play it? Think of all the- I think that's true, but there's also true that some shit games are fun. Classics that you could be playing right now. Some of you guys haven't played GTA 4 or the Metal Gear series, and you're telling me you're putting your time into Vanguard? You gotta change that right away. Get a PC or buy some old consoles and just start playing some of the classics until gaming gets better. That's my personal advice. And if you want to continue playing Vanguard, stuff like that, I can't stop you, obviously. What I can tell you is that one day your wallet's probably going to run out of money and you're going to be left with a bunch of shitty tracer bundles for your Vanguard character and a bunch of armor sets for Halo Infinite. A game that's already dead after a couple months of release. He's so mad. I didn't I, even this talk is so about funny. stuff like the Definitive Edition or Cyberpunk uh -huh. in this video, because that's just not even worth discussing. Those games are embarrassments in their own right. Uh -huh. But until we see a change in the industry, I want to keep my expectations for games extremely low. I think that's good to do. Yeah, don't don't have high expectations. Wait for reviews. Give it a couple of weeks before it comes out, and if it's looking good, then play it. And I suggest you do the same. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. Let me link you guys a video. There should be independent consumer-focused label that certify games are finished, has fair monetization, and live up to good gaming standards. Here's the problem with that, though. It is like... Any time that you have that, let me link you guys a video right there. Uh, anytime you guys have that, like, there's always a way that, you know, these companies, they get into it and they make it worse. You know what I mean? And uh, it's just, why would somebody listen to them? You, you can never trust a person to always make the right decisions. It's just, there's a lot of reasons why 
things fall apart that way. Yeah, make the game good on release. Yeah, it's super subjective, too. It's like, because some people are going to say it's good. Some people aren't. Like, it's very hard to say. Let me watch this, uh, let me watch this New World video uh, about uh, New World dead game. Don't think it, I don't think so. Will the devs listen? Let's get it fixed. All right, let's, let's see what they have to say. And uh, before I do that, uh, yeah, I think this video was, was pretty good overall. Uh, I, I think this guy, like, obviously it just seems like he was just so mad about games. And it's like, I don't blame him. The thing is, like, there's so much shit with games now. Is like, how can you blame somebody for being mad about it? Because, like, it's like if you grew up playing video games and then, like, you just see that this, this fucking bullshit, right? Like, where is it? Oh, what the fuck was this? Um, I don't even know where it, where it went. But, like, you see the way that these games go, like, with battle passes and everything. Yeah, you're going to be tired of it. That's it. No surprise. He's old school when it comes to gaming. Can't blame him. Yeah, it's just, like... It, it, I don't I don't think gamers are ever going to be able to like exercise restraint on like a large scale because of how big gaming is. It's too big to have a unified front.